Hello. Hello, good evening, teacher. Hi, how are you, Rodrigo? I'm fine. I'm excellent. You you've been working or you are working right now? Um I'm working right now, but I I I want I want to finish uh, my, my task. All right, very good. Okay, very nice. All right. Hi Freddy. Hi Manuel. Guys, can you hear me? Hola, hola, Freddy and Manuel, you there? All right, very good. Hi, yes, I can hear you. Ah, excellent. All right. Hello. Hey, teacher, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Very good. That's okay. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, nice. I'm happy it's Monday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. By your energy. Very today. good. I also have Gabriela and Saida. And oh my goodness, I can't remember your name with Gomez. What's your name again? That's your last name, I know, but anyway, I guess, yeah. Hi. Hello. All right, okay, guys. So, um, well, I hope you had a very nice weekend. All right, so we're going to begin our second uh, week and we begin with, with section two. All right. So we're going to start with the listening, okay? So are you guys ready? Yes, I'm ready. Excellent, very good. All right, okay, so I just, um, hi, Evelyn. I just sent to the WhatsApp group the audios we're gonna be working with tonight. Did you, were you able to get them, guys? Yes. Yeah, all right, very good. I think there was one reloading. So I think, oh, I did already, all right. All right, very good. Okay, so guys, uh, we're going to begin right now. So I'm going to share with you my presentation, which is based on uh, the questions that we're going to be working on. Remember, this is section two. All right, so we need to pay attention to uh, the listening part, okay? Before we begin, guys, how are you? How do you consider yourself on the, listen, on the listening part? Rodrigo, Freddy, Manuel. Can, can you repeat, teacher? Yeah. How do, you, um, how do you consider yourself on the listening? For, for, for me, the listening um, 50%. All right. Okay. Very good. All right. Gabriela, what about for you? And Saida and Evelyn. How's the listening for you? Is it difficult? Is it not so bad? Honestly, in my case, I think is the is my weakness. weakness. All right. Okay. That's, that is your weakest point. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And for the rest of you guys, I need to hear I you. I need to hear you. For me, me uh huh. Evelyn, yeah, difficult. go ahead. For me, it's difficult the native uh, English. Uh -huh. All right, okay. Okay, all right, very good. And for Nidia, Saida, and Gabriela? Hello, guys, girls. Oh, I don't have anybody today on the, on the camera, so I don't know if you guys are there or not. <laughs> It's very difficult, teacher. All right. Yeah, Saida, it's difficult for you? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. So the idea, girls and guys, of course, we're going to pra be practicing again, as we always do. We're going to do the, um, the uh, presentation based on the um, platform, and we're going to do some practices, okay? Why I send the audios to you on the WhatsApp group is because... Once we get to the practice part, I'm well, we're going to be using the audios, okay? So we have here, we're going to begin. Were you able to see the, the platform today or on the weekend for section two? Yes. All right, okay. So it's going to be the same for this little part. I just want, for the ones that have not seen it, I, I just want to go over it. All right, really quickly, and then we get to business, all right, which is the listening, okay? So here okay. is the video. This is the same video that is on the platform. <clears throat> Let me just um, 
get it going here. As, as on the reading, we are going to go over four types of uh, questions on the listening part. Oops, sorry. Here, just give me a second, guys. I just need to share the audio sound. Here you go. Okay, let me know if you can listen clearly, okay? Inside the top listen? listening section, we'll begin with a function question. Guys, can you listen? Yes. All right, yes, perfect. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you. Questions right. ask you to identify the particular meaning of a statement in a given context because a statement can have different meanings depending on the situation. In other words, the real meaning is different from the surface or literal meaning. For so here, guys, in this type of questions, this is what we have to look for. All right. They're going to be saying something, but not literally. All right. For example, I say, Hamburger looks delicious. What am I, what my, what, what might be, what I might be saying is I'm hungry. All right. So that's pretty much the function questions. Okay. They are not telling you exactly what we need to hear, but then you kind of understand it by meaning. All right. You understand that? Yeah. Hola, hola. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yes, right. I, I need you to follow me, guys, here, because I don't, I can't see you, so I don't know if you're there. Thank you, Freddy. So I, I am finally talking to someone. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's okay. So let's continue Example. Here. If you're in a room with other people and someone says, it's getting hot in here, what they might really be saying is, could someone turn on the AC? You can recognize function questions because they include all right, so the, uh, the way these questions are structured is as follows. All right, it has to say, what does the professor mean? Says, all right, or what does the student uh, mean when he says or she says, all right? That the, the, um, the cue here or the key word here is mean. All right, what does the professor mean? Because we need to understand the meaning of it without really that, like for, for them, they're not really saying it to us, all right? Or what does the student say when he says, all right, that's another type of question that you're gonna look for on this um, question type for the TOEFL test, okay? As we go on and you will notice on the uh, exercises that we're gonna be working on, that's, what, how, that's how they are structured, all right? Good phrases like, what does the professor mean when he says? Or, why does the student say? Here's a tip for building your listening skills that can also help you with function questions. When listening to a passage, ask yourself what the speaker's really doing by saying certain things. The speaker may be doing things like directing, recommending, complaining, agreeing or disagreeing, questioning or confirming. When you know these types of... That's very important for us to know because that gives us like that makes our life easier, all right? To understand, okay, is, it, is he or she directing something? Is he or she recommending something? Is he or she complaining about something? Is it agreeing or disagreeing? Is it questioning? Is it confirming? So you need to ask this type of questions within the question. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. All right, yes, very true. good. Thank you intentions and that they often happen beneath the surface of what is said they can help you identify the function of what is said more easily now you may take a look at the sample question all right so here we have a sample question i know this is like the, we can actually enlarge it here um and if you notice what we're looking for is right here you read and hear what does the professor mean when he says this, all right? Now, the way these, these questions are structured and for like a lot of people, the listening is very complicated and I'm gonna tell you why and it's because they are very long, all right? The, the uh, discussions or the conversation that we actually hear on TOEFL test, they are very, very long. We are talking about four minutes, five minutes, sometimes even seven minutes, okay? And for, I can see Freddie's face, all right? <laughs> and for a one um, discussion or one listening, you have five questions, okay? 
by the time that the conversation or the lecture finishes, you forgot everything. Yeah. All right. And then you're like saying, oh my God, I, I can't remember. All right. So it's really complicated. And listening is like not easy to handle. All right. But again, one of like the biggest tips that we can give is you need to listen to a lot of English, like movies or like anything more like serious, like documentaries and stuff like that. And you can ask yourself, okay, what did he really mean by that? All right. I mean, you can be like kind of like challenging yourselves when you listen to like any kind of like English. All right. So for you to get more practice on this. Okay. So remember these, um, some people flunk on these type of questions because they think it's one listening per question. And that's not the case. All right. It's one listening for at least four questions. All right. Or sometimes five questions different types of questions okay like the ones you study on TOEFL one and the ones we're going to be studying on TOEFL two all right so you need to be like aware of the type of questions and what they look like within the question now this one in particular you listen to the whole conversation all right and then they will play again because it says again listen again you're not going to listen to the whole conversation again or to the whole lecture or you're going to listen to a very short extract from the listening and they will tell you what did the professor mean by that all right so first we need to listen to everything like the five minutes and then you have to listen to the, the that question that we're looking for all right and then they will play that short part of the audio you understand what i'm saying yeah all right so in yes. TOEFL test it is valid if you take some notes while you're listening, but that takes more skills from you because you need to be listening, you need to be paying attention, and then you need to be writing. So for some people, it doesn't really work, all right? For some people, they just write listen and listen and listen and try to memorize what the speaker was saying, but after five minutes, you forgot everything, all right? So it's a challenge here that we have ahead, all right? So. Uh, this is how it looked like. I mean, the question will look like, and this is how, like, we're going to go right now to the uh, presentation. All right. I don't know if you have any questions so far. Nidia, I can see you. Sandy, I can see you. Well, no, Sandy, it's not even. Good evening. All right. All right. All right. Do you have any questions about the listening part of the TOEFL? I know you went over the listening uh, section on TOEFL 1, so it's not nothing new for you here, but... Uh, the type of questions are needed. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So questions? No, no we're okay. No. no Perfect. No. Okay. Very good. Okay. So here we go, guys, with the um, with what we really have to do. So this is how we're gonna work it out. Okay. I have a, the the listenings I sent to you on the TOEFL. I'm oh, sorry, on the WhatsApp group. They are the same listenings I have here on the platform. Okay, I'm gonna play one of them right now so we all can listen to it. For example, this uh, American government class lecture that we're gonna be listening about, it will answer question one and question two only because they are these type of questions. But that doesn't mean that on the real TOEFL, this whole conversation that lasts for almost five minutes is going to only answer two questions. It's going to answer five questions, okay? Right now, only two because they are the type of questions that we're studying, all right? So I'm going to play the audio right now. And after that, this is what we're going to listen to it first together, all right? The first one. And then we're going to listen to part of a lecture in an American minutes. government class. And listen. Uh, and the next slide is the question. The question says, why does the professor say this? And then you have the four options. Here, I'm going to play another audio with a short part of the listening so you can actually identify this question, okay? So first the five minutes, and then the second question, or the real question is like, the listening is like 20 seconds, all right? So you know how complicated it is because first we need to listen for five minutes and then for 20 seconds for the right question. Okay, so here we go. I want you to get ready. Just relax and just kind of 
listen and enjoy, all right? <laughs> this is American government class. We might not know anything about how the government in the States is built up, all right? So that's the challenge of TOEFL because it's not really talking about, you know, daily activities. It's talking about something more serious, all right? But then again, we're very smart and we can handle it, all right? So I'm gonna play the audio now. Make sure that you're listening right and you let me know, okay? And just, if you want, you can take notes or not, all right, just listen and enjoy. Listen to part of a lecture in an American government class. So today I want to go over the main points about what's called the Electoral College, that is the way that presidents are chosen in the United States. Also vice presidents too, of course. Now, um, some of you may think that the president is the candidate who gets the most votes from the voting public. Often that's true. But the way it works, it's not necessarily the one who gets the most votes from the public. In practice, it's the candidate who wins the most votes from the Electoral College. Okay, so let me try to make this clear. First of all, what is an elector? Well, an elector is a person, a member of a political party, who has been chosen by that party in a given state. Okay, so this person, this elector, is pledged to his or her party's candidate for president. So in any state, there are several electors. The number of electors in a state is equal to the number of U.S. senators plus the number of U.S. representatives in that state. <laughs> Don't get confused here. The senators and representatives are not the same people as the electors. It's just that the numbers are the same. So, there are always two senators in each state, as you know, but the number of representatives depends on the population of the state. So a populous state has several representatives, and a state without a lot of people will have only a few representatives. Some states, such as Alaska, which has a small population, for example, have only one representative at the current time. That means that Alaska will have three electors chosen by each political party. In total, there are currently 538 electoral votes in the whole country. Okay, so what happens when you vote in the presidential election? Well, what you have when you vote is a ballot, which normally says electors for, and then the names of each of the presidential candidates running. So you choose electors for the candidate of your choice. Here's the interesting part, in a way. Whichever candidate wins the most popular votes in a state also wins all the electors of that state. So back to the case of Alaska. The candidate who wins the greatest share of the vote from the general public wins three electoral votes. Those three electors become the electors of that state. Now, okay, there are a couple of exceptions to that, but we'll have a look at those next week. Now, the election for president, where all the voting public cast their votes, is, as you know, in early November. Mm, okay, so the electors of the state, remember, these are the people who were in effect chosen through popular vote and who will vote for the candidate of their party, meet in December, and they cast their votes, one for the president and one for the vice president. Okay. So the candidate with the most electoral college votes, provided it's an absolute majority, that is, over half the total of electoral college votes, is declared president. The same goes for the vice president. If no one gets an absolute majority, then the U.S. House of Representatives chooses the president from among the top candidates. Well, there are also some problems associated with this system that you will hear raised from time to time. One problem, for example, that I can mention right off the bat is that it's possible that the person who is declared president through having won the most electoral college votes may not have won the majority of the general public's votes. This has to do with the fact that the distribution of electoral votes tends to overrepresent people in less populous states. 
Now, those who favor this system point out, however, that it more accurately represents all parts of the country, not just the metropolitan populous regions. So, in effect, it balances out rural and urban regions and contributes to national cohesion. There are several other things that opponents of this system have put forward, but I'd like you to read up on those before we meet next week. All right. <laughs> and everybody laughs. Why do you guys laugh? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Very interesting. It's very, very interesting. Yes, of course, it's very interesting. And if you notice, it took almost five minutes. Okay. Now, in this case, we're going to be, we will, I mean, we're going to be able to answer question one and question two. All right. But remember that only one listening will answer five or six or four questions. Okay. All right. So that's the idea that we're going to do. Right now, we already listened to this. We would move on to listen to the small part of it, all right, with the choices. Again, we have four choices, A, B, C, and D, all right? But that's your job, all right? We, I just wanted to, okay. to see your reaction here with this, um, with this long uh, lecture about American government class, okay? We're gonna learn a lot here about American government, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna send you to your groups. I'm gonna send the presentation with uh, right now to the WhatsApp group, okay? Because I want you to see here. I'm just gonna move on right now here. Why does the professor here, oh, say sorry, this? Sorry, sorry. Why does the professor oh. say this? All right. So here are like that. That this is the question. Why does the professor say this? And then you have four choices. A, B, C, D. Of course, you need to listen again because you don't know what what is the struct from the audio that they want us to uh, pay attention to or answer all right so let's 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 get this one right now just for us to practice it together <laughs> don't get confused sir. why does the professor say this that's the question <laughs> don't get confused here the senators and representatives are not the same people as the electors why does she say that a b c or d all right. For me, uh -huh. it's the letter B because try to explain what is the number the possible select uh, presidents or candidate for president uh, in the United States. All right. Okay. Could be letter B. Any other choices, guys? Just from just listening to it once? For me, is letter A. All right, okay, letter A, all right. Maribel, for you, what do you think it was? Confusion should be in English, it's in Spanish, right, on my PPT, don't mind that. <laughs> no, uh -huh. no, 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 I'm not sure. All right, so that is, I mean, right now, because it's the practicing and the preparing for the TOEFL, we can listen to it as many times as we need to or as many times as we want to. But once we face real TOEFL, you cannot listen again. All right, it's only once and that's it. If you got it, perfect. If you didn't, yeah. go eeny, meeny, miny, mo. All right, but don't leave anything blank. All right, to fill something out, all right? Because you never know, all right? But that's not the idea. The idea is for you to comprehend what you're listening, all right? Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, Freddy, for you, or is it, I mean, do you have any idea or you want to take a guess of what the options could have been or the option could have been right? I have the idea, but I'm not really sure because right. I think in letter A and letter B because okay. the teacher said that don't confuse and then uh, she explained the uh -huh. exact number of lecture. So right. maybe I think it's letter B. Okay, all right. Nidia, for you, what was the best choice? I, I want to ask mm -hmm. if we have to refer only the, of the, the sentence that she said. Right, only. All the, all mm -hmm. the lecture is about, I right. think, uh, right. B, but the phrase that she said at that moment, I think it's A. All right, yeah. Uh, that's a very good question, Nidia. It's only about what she said on that uh, moment, all right, on this particular question, like on this. Let's. Like, Why does the professor say that. this? <laughs> Don't get confused here. The senators and representatives are not the same people as the electors. All 
right? That's exactly what you have to base your answer on, Nidia. All right, that's a very good question. All right, not on everything else, but that five seconds of her, or of, her, of she saying that, yeah? So it's letter, so it's letter A. I that's think. right, yeah, guys, very good. It's letter A, all right? So that's the idea. You have to pay attention mm -hmm. to exactly the very, like the, the part that is on this slide, all right? Not the whole conversation, mm -hmm. but because remember that you need to answer five other questions, of course you need to answer, I mean, you need to listen to the whole conversation or to the whole lecture, yes? Could be because in the, uh, in the indication, mm -hmm. uh, she made major emphasis mm -hmm. in confuse, don't confuse it. Right, right, okay, very good, okay. So we're going to go right now to your groups. I'm going to send the presentation right now, but this is pretty much like the audios on the presentation are the same audios that I just sent to you. Just try to look for the name of it. For example, this one, uh, this one is the same thing. This is the same audio of the first one. All right. Remember that this first audio was answering question one and question two. So we did together number one. You would need to do question two. For number what does the three, professor mean wait, wait, when wait, she wait, says wait, this? There are uh, all what does the time to time uh, here we would have to go on to number three listen to a conversation between a student and a professor all right so try to look for the title if you're not going to use the presentation but rather the audio that I sent to you then look for the name audio okay but then you have to go you would have to go on to answer this question. And that question has the audio at the bottom. So I'm going to send the presentation right now as you go to your groups. You understand what you're going to be doing? Yes. Yeah, all right. Yes. The idea, we're not going to have enough. We're, we have six listening here. So, all right, like about yeah, sorry. six listening. That's OK, uh, Maribel. So we have six. The idea is for us to practice, and the idea is for you to have it just in case you have some free time and you want to keep on listening, all right? Or you want to listen again, all right? So the idea is to share what I have so you guys can like play it again and again and again if needed, all right? So we're gonna go to the groups right now. Uh, we're gonna make, yeah, four groups. And I'm gonna send the presentation right now to the WhatsApp group. Manuel and Saida, are you okay? Hi. Hello. Did you get the, did you get the um, did you get the invitation to go to your group? No, teacher. Oh, Saida, let's see. You're supposed to be working with Freddy, Saida. Oh, no. Hold on. I'm going to move you, and I'm going to move you back again because I want you to work with uh, Freddy because otherwise he's going to be working by himself. All right? Okay. Okay. Check now if you got the invitation. Hi, Freddy. Hi, Freddy. Can you go back? Can you go back to your group? Because I'm sending Saida to work with you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Are you able to go back by yourself or should I send you back again? Uh, please could you send me the uh, the option because 
All right, I'm going to send you to another group and then I'm going to resend you to number four. All right. <laughs> okay. Just give me a second here. I send you to number four again. No. Not yet, teacher. No yet? No. My internet connection is quite slow today. And I leave the uh, the room because uh, there was nobody. Just me. I know, I know. Uh -huh. Yeah, sometimes we need to be a little patient because some people kind of go away and I don't know where they are, but Saida's oh. already on the group. Uh, okay. Let's see. Can you see now if you get the invitation, Freddy? Mm. No, teacher. Not yet. Yeah. Fredito, did you get it?
Hi, guys. Hi, Hi. teacher. I'm sorry. I think the, the presentation is way too heavy. So we're going to do it together because otherwise we're not going to be able to work here. All right. So I'm very sorry for that. So let's let's use plan B. All right. I'm, I'm, it's loading up anyway. So slowly but surely you're going to get it on your WhatsApp. So you can keep on listening later in case you want to do it. All right. I'm very sorry for that. So let's uh, remember the uh, it was let's work right now on question two. Okay, so the, this is question two from the same uh, listening of the government, all right, the, the American government, all right? So we decided that for number one was choice A, all right? Let's listen to the short uh, question or the short um, sentence that the professor says for number two, and let's see Why what does the professor choices, say right? this? Don't get confused here. The sentence... Okay. So this is question number two. Uh, let me know if you listen. Or I'm just going to go again. Yeah, we're sharing the audio here. Okay, so what does the professor mean when she says this? We have four choices. Many voters reject this, this system of choosing the president. Critics of the voting system have pointed out weaknesses. The students have made several objections to the voting system and flaws in this voting system are not a disadvantage. So let's listen to what she says. What does the professor mean when she says this? There are also some problems associated with this system that you will hear raised from time to time. Again, you want to listen again to that one? Yeah, all right. Please. Mm What does the professor mean when she says this? There are also some problems associated with this system that you will hear raised from time to time. What do you think the, the option might be? Anybody? Letter B for Letter B? critical of work. Yes. All right, I think critic. the same. The same, all right. Nidia, Manuel, what do you think? Uh, yeah, the same, very good. Gabriela, Said, and Evelyn, Maribel, Rodrigo, Gabi. Hello, guys. Choices or B is okay for you? B. B as in baby or D as in day? B of oh, baby. All right, very good, yeah of the voting system have pointed out weaknesses all right very good so let's go on here with the next uh listening we're gonna do it together because the ppt is very heavy what all does right. the professor all mean right, when so. she says this there are also some problems okay this is question three listen to a conversation between a student and a professor all right so again we're gonna it's, i think it's like about four minutes all right so we're gonna to listen together, then we're gonna to go to the short part and we're gonna like uh, answer the, the options, all right? Get the options right. Let's pay attention here. Listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. Good morning, Dr. Blake. Sorry, I'm running late. Oh, no problem, Angie. It, uh, it gave me a bit of time to review your research proposal. Oh, good. Uh, so you had a chance to look at my proposal. And what'd you think? Well, it's reasonably well presented. But if you really want to get that grant, I think you should explain how you're going to set up, uh, get a more focused statistical analysis. Oh, I hadn't really given that point much thought. Because, frankly, uh, I'm not so sure what is the, well, what the best way to go about it is. Well, you really need to clear that up. Why don't you go to the computer center? You can tell the woman at the information desk, um, Miriam, I think her name is. Tell Miriam what you need, and she'll direct you to one of the statisticians there. You know, someone who can tell you the best way to set up your experiment in order to get your statistics in a meaningful form. Then that procedure needs to be explained in your proposal. Okay. Oh, 
I'd better do that right away. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Proposals have to be in before the office closes on Friday, and you're going to want to have a clear idea of how you're going to deal with your data. Thanks. Bye. Uh, just a minute, Angie. Yes? Before you go, there are a couple more points. Let's see. I wrote a couple of comments on this draft you gave me. Oh, here you are. My concern is how you've defined, or I should say haven't defined, your subjects. You mentioned that you'll be testing non-native speakers' linguistic recognition of certain English stress patterns, but you haven't clearly defined the group of subjects. Well, I've made contact with a group of international students who are willing to work on the project. Yeah, I know, but there are some issues that the committee will question. The proposal as you have it seems, well, somewhat like comparing apples and oranges. We've talked about your subjects being given an oral fluency test so that you can choose subjects with about the same linguistic level. But you haven't made that clear in your proposal. The committee will say that the data from, oh, let's say, a tonal language speaker at a high level can't be compared to a romance language speaker at a beginning level. The data would be ambiguous. You see, you need to explain how you're going to select your subjects. You mean... I should write more about the oral test we talked about? That's right. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Blake. I have a class in 20 minutes, and I want to get to the computer center. It's uh, on my way to the classroom building to set up an appointment. So could I come back around 3.30? Mm, no, that's not a good time for me. Why don't you read through my comments and work through the explanation about subject selection? And would you have time to bring your next draft in first thing tomorrow morning? We could go over the final details quickly, and that would give you time to make any other necessary changes before turning it in. Oh, I would really appreciate that, Dr. Blake. Thank you so much for your help. Bye. All right. So the question here is... Listen to a conversation. Is this one. Why does the professor say this? Now we have four options here. Freddy, can you read uh, all the options? Okay. Why does the professor say this? Letter A, to illustrate a flaw in the student proposal. Letter B, to compare two language groups. Letter C, to demonstrate international students differ differing linguistic levels. Or letter D, to suggest the kind of test the student should give her subjects. All right, okay. So here, this is the question. I mean, this is what we need to pay attention to. Why does the professor say this? The proposal as you have it seems, well, somewhat like comparing apples and oranges. All right. Do you wanna to listen to that little part again? Compare apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. Listen again. Why does the professor say this? The proposal as you have it seems, well, somewhat like comparing apples and oranges. Okay. Ideas, ideas? A, B, C, D? B. B? Letter B. Yeah. Ah. Yes, is the letter B. Letter B for everybody. <laughs> I think that yeah. is letter A. Letter A, who because said that? He, who he said tried letter to A? Yeah, yeah, who's, got it, all right, very Gabby. good. Gabby, sorry, Gabby, <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> because he's giving an, an example of the flaw that happens. The flaws, because all right. The flaws are the things yeah. that are not so secure or so correct, so kind of like, mm, she's not yeah. really making a point across here. It's like you cannot really compare apples and oranges they're different so that's an idiomatic expression right right all right very good so yeah in that case it would be letter a to illustrate a flaw in the student's proposal all right yeah don't worry freddy <laughs> all right let's go on here with the other Why does one the professor say this the all right let's go on here number four ready listen again this is the last one we're going to be able to do remember have another class that it's it's working its way to you guys the presentation so you can finish it up all right so i'll assign it for homework and then we can check the answers tomorrow all right 
listen again to part of the discussion, then answer the question, all right? So this is the discussion we're gonna to listen to. Listen to part of a discussion in a business correspondence class. We've been concentrating on formal letters in business communications, but today I'd like to talk about some issues in using email. Actually, we'll be looking at this topic for the next couple of class sessions, as it's likely much of your written communication in business will be done with email. And the etiquette of using email is extremely important in the business world. So, okay, there are two types of emails that you'll be using in business. Internal, those sent within the office, and the external, customers, suppliers, agencies. Now, we discussed the paper letter and how it could get separated from its envelope. So it's essential for a paper letter to have all the receiver sender information in the letter itself. Now, most email programs include the receiver sender information, so the message can't get separated from this information. But there are a few options that some people are not aware of. And unfortunately, not all programs have all these options. Okay, let's say there are 30 people in the office where you work and you want to tell them about a change in policy. How do you set up your email? I mean, who do you send this message to? What do you put into the box? Well, I'd put the names into the two box, you know, the box where I put the names of the people who will get the message. Okay. So you would type all 30 names into the receiver box? Well, probably not type. I might make a mistake. I'd copy them in or use the reply to all icon from another email. And of course, I'd change the message and the subject. Okay. That is one way. Yes? Um. Yeah, I have to do a lot of, like, um, official emails, and I get really annoyed when people send me a message with lots of names in it. Sometimes I print out the message, and I get, like, three pages of people's addresses for half a page of message. So what do you suggest? Well, I usually set up my address book so that I can put all the names of people into one group. And then when I want to send them all a message, I just put the name of the group into the receiver box and then everyone gets the message. That way, if they print it out, then only the name of the group is on the page. Yeah, I don't like that because, well, what annoys me is I need someone's address, right? So I go to a message to get it and it isn't there because just the group name is there. Or I want to see if everyone is on the list and, and that no one has been left out. Okay, so we have two differing opinions on what to put into the receiver box for mail within a company. We'll come back to this point in a moment. Now, let's change the audience. Suppose the message is that you'll be moving to a new office and you want to tell all your customers the new location. Well, that's different then, because you can't put all the customers' names and addresses into the receiver box. I mean, that's private information, isn't it? So you got to use a group name. No, 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 I don't agree. I mean, I do agree that it's important to have customer anonymity, but if you put a group name, then it isn't personalized. I really think the customer wants to be addressed by their name, not something like customer group. Using a name is saying you are an important individual instead of you're just a name on this list. So what would you do? You don't want to put their names in a list for all to see, and you don't want to address them impersonally. Well, I guess I would write to them individually so that I could keep well, maintain privacy and still be sort of personal. That sounds like a lengthy process, especially if your customers are in the thousands. A lot of work. Any other suggestions? No one? Okay. Remember when we were discussing the formal business letter? We talked about a blind copy. Remember how you use a blind copy when you don't want the receiver to know who else is receiving copies? Most email systems have a blind copy function, but it doesn't usually appear automatically. You have to change your settings for it to show up on your screen. I send myself the message and put everyone's address, including my own, as a check into the blind copy box. Every individual receives the message addressed as if he or she was the only recipient of the message.
Listen to part okay. of the discussion. It's right. difficult. Yeah. All right. Listen again to part of the discussion and answer the question. We have the four choices to avoid an ar argument between the students who have different opinions, to imply that different businesses deal with mail differently, to bring up the different situation that may have to be dealt with in business, or to indicate that most businesses have to make policy changes. All right. So let's uh, listen to what the, the question is or the sentence. Listen again to part of the discussion, then answer the question. Okay. So we have two differing opinions on what to put into the receiver box for mail within a company. We'll come back to this point in a moment. Now, let's change the audience. Why does the professor say this? We'll come back to this point in a moment. Now, let's change the audience. All right. So what do you say? Or do you want to listen again? To the small part, of course. Again. Okay. A. All right, you got A. You think it's A? All right, let's listen. Just listen again it. to part of the discussion, then answer the question. Okay. So we have two differing opinions on what to put into the receiver box for mail within a company. We'll come back to this point in a moment. Now, let's change the audience. Why does the professor say this? We'll come back to this point in a moment. Now, let's change the audience. Mm -hmm. So what do you say, A, B, C, or D? C. Who said C, Nidia? Yes. All right, who else says C? Or anybody yeah, has another C. option? I yeah. want to shame. Uh, yeah? I agree with Nidia. All right, so C. letter C. That's right, yes. <laughs> to bring up a different situation that may have to be dealt with business, all right? In business, sorry. So yeah, that's letter C. All right, guys, very good. I'm very sorry for the, uh, the trouble I had with the, uh, uploading the presentation, but it's very heavy because of the audios, all right? So I'm gonna, I mean, I already sent it to you, but it's, I think it's still loading up. If not, what I'm gonna do is like, I'm gonna make it shorter, just send the audios instead for the little questions, all right? because the longer ones I already sent to you individually, all right? So I hope you can do it. We have, we finished four. We had three more, five, six, and seven. All right, so in case you have time to do it, I want you to work on that, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, guys, very good. I, I really have to go right now. All right, so I'll see you guys tomorrow with the other type of questions, all right, from the listening part. Thank you so much for being in class. I'll Thank see you, you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. See you. Good evening. Bye.